Hello and welcome to the third daily podcast from the Edinburgh TV Festival. Joining me on the sofa today are Dan Sabah, our sofa regular, the Guardian's head of media and tech, Boyd Hilton, Mr. TV, otherwise known as the TV editor of Heat magazine, and Richard Pepiat, journalist turned stand-up comic. Well, <laughs> what better way to look back on the festival than with a media monkey quiz? I know you chaps are uh, particularly excited about this. Well, uh, I think we're a bit unhappy we've had this sprung upon us now. <laughs> yeah, we weren't briefed properly. It's just like on TV, all those TV quiz shows. No one, no one sees the questions in advance. So. Uh, uh, so we're gonna... They know they're taking part in a quiz. <laughs> All right, chaps, so fingers on the buzzers and the, the prize is this tie. Uh, question number one. The, the, the booby prize is two ties. Ti- time is tight, uh, says the man in the yellow specs. Who was, who was said to have gone from the best job in comedy to the biggest? Shane Allen. Yeah. This was Shane Allen, of course. Uh, this, is, this is my Angus Dayton bit where I explain the, uh, the gag. Yeah. Uh, yes, who was going from uh, Channel 4 to the BBC? So Hilton, one point. Uh, question number two. Who's been told to swivel even more than they were before? Oh, The Voice. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah. This is, of course, BBC One Saturday Night Show, The Voice, in which uh, they've said Series 2 will have more swivelling chairs. Uh, Fantastic. Question number three. Hilton's taken an early lead. Uh, There's a voice in my ear saying, get the last question, but I'm not wearing a thing in my ear, so I'm I'm worried for my mental health. (laughs) Excuse me. Right, okay, here we go. Um, Who turned his TV on its... Who turned his TV on its side so he could watch it while he was lying down? Well, I'm glad we ended on a high note. Let me guess, <laughs> let me guess, let me guess. Stuart Murphy? No. Oh. Have a guess. Former Guardian TV columnist turned uh, scriptwriter. Oh, I know, yeah. Charlie Brooker. Charlie Brooker. Oh. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> right, I'm back with the panel, and we've had a rub down after our media monkey quiz to turn our attention to the other media news. We're first up, Dan. This is uh, rather festival-related, I should say. They've announced the uh, Channel of the Year last night. It was uh, BBC Two. Yeah, I think I'm going to just break any confidentiality that may or may not exist, but certainly that was the way the Media Guardian voted for. Uh, uh, I think we felt uh, slightly negatively that BBC Two stood out in a year where we couldn't quite sort of think of voting for anyone else. And I think, you know, the voice sort of, I think, shone a shadow over BBC One. Channel Four, I think, is still in transition and has not sort of quite produced any much standout programming. Uh, ITV, uh, similarly, it's all about the old war horses, I think, sort of rolling on and still, you know, delivering or occasionally otherwise. Um, and it's right, I don't think you could go for Channel 5. I mean, I, you know, if you're asking me, I think said yesterday I might have gone for Sky Atlantic. I'd rather watch everything on Sky Atlantic, it seems. But I think BBC Two is a good choice. Uh, and I think, you know, Janice has very much found her feet. And I think the sort of the Wolf Hall Commission is at the sort of serious end of the market is the kind of commission that everyone will be sort of talking about and looking forward to. So, yeah, boy, it, it was a good night for BBC, but they tend to always sort of clean up at these awards at the festival. Yeah. But they got BBC Two, BBC Four won the best uh, mm. digital channel, slightly old-fashioned uh, yeah. moniker, and then Sherlock won the best, uh, best yeah. programme. Well, Sherlock won two, didn't it? They won the young people's vote for, for best programme as well, which, was, which is the best programme on TV. So that was good. But BBC, BBC Two, absolutely fine. BBC Four was a bit mystified about. I mean, you know, they've got the, the, those good um, Danish, Scandinavian imports they show on Saturday night. But I don't know what else kind of they've contributed in recent. And also it seems to be a channel that decided to kind of create less of its own output. And to give an award at that moment seemed slightly odd. I would have given it to Sky One or Sky Atlantic because both, you know, you have to recognise that Sky under um, Stuart Murphy have suddenly put a huge amount of money into British um, homegrown stuff. And a lot of it's really good. So I would have given it probably to Sky One. I thought it was a bit weird BBC Four. Yeah. Richard, where, where would your vote have gone? Oh, Sky Atlantic, I think. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think it's been a, a great addition to the the sort of uh, the TV market, should we call it that? Mm. But obviously, uh, with the return of Dallas on Channel 5, surely a shoe in for next year. <laughs> so, very, I, don't, I don't know what anyone else is bothering, really. You're all a big fan them. of anything to do with Richard Desmond, though. So that's you know, we, all, we do know that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's always got my vote. Yeah. Uh, Dan, well, uh, away from TV, uh, it's the third instalment of the Prince Harry saga, I guess. When we met on, uh, on the first day of the festival, uh, the newspapers hadn't printed the picture. Mm. The second day, the, the sun broke ranks and we had a, a, a naked prince. Uh, what's, the, what's our third day update? Lots of complaints to the, the Press Complaints Commission. I think 850 people. Yeah, quite a lot by the standards of newspapers, but I think not a lot actually in the real world. I mean, if people were really angry, we'd have seen 20 or 30,000 complaints or, you know, the kind of numbers we're used to seeing in television when an issue gets really hot. Saxgate style. Yeah, look, I think The Sun, uh, I think the sun did the right thing. Uh, I think it was very arguable as to whether these sort of pictures were sort of private and should be sort of restricted and British eyes should be prevented from seeing them in print. Uh, uh, I think that 
uh, the, what, the, what, what were they doing? You know, I doubt they added any extra sales by so doing because I think people had already seen the pictures online. But it was a sort of strong statement, I think, and in an era where a lot of people wanted to say the press has been cowed by Leveson, no one's going to dare to do this. What actually happened was, was the Sun, I think, sort of made it, oh, a statement of virility, if you like, a statement of brand value and said, yeah, we'll go for it. Richard, were you surprised once the Sun had done it that other papers didn't jump in and follow suit? Like your old yeah, employee, no, for I, no I, I am surprised they haven't. Um, but it, it does feel like, an, I mean, I think it just feels like a very old story now. And I think that's one thing that comes across is it did kind of show just how far print is behind the curve and that you're sort of saying the pictures you've already seen online two days ago, here they are. Um, but no, but for me, I, I don't agree they should have printed them. I think that, you know, what this is really boils down to is, is the right of a, of a corporation to print naked pictures of a bloke against his will. And I think that if you he's put it... Any old he's not any old bloke, though, is he? He's a royal prince, third in line no, for the front. fine, but he's, but he's oh. having a bit of fun in private. I, don't, I do not see that really there's any more public interest other than the fact that they'll make some money out of it. And if they, you know what, if, they, if, if, they, if it's really not about the money, <clears throat> then they should donate all the pr extra profits that they may have made <laughs> to that poor intern who had to pose naked on the front of the sun the day before. Um, no, I mean, that could have been you a few years ago. It could have been me. I, 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 did, sort of, I did get a little sort of pang mm, in my heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. of, could have uh, had you naked on the front like, of the Daily Star. Well, that would have put on sales. Yeah. <laughs> one for and one against. Yeah. You got the casting Funnily vote. Enough, I'm slightly in the middle. I think. I mean, <laughs> I think that um, on the one hand, I actually think it's a slight myth that everyone's seen. I bet my mum hasn't seen them online, for example. There's a slight feeling in you know in the media bubble, if I can use that hideous phrase, that oh we've all seen everything. You know, there is a difference between in the real world. I don't think everyone has seen them at all. Um, everyone on Twitter has, and everyone on all that. But you know, a lot of people probably haven't. And I think they probably will put on sales for a start. And I also think. I think there was some kind of like agreement, a kind of unofficial agreement among all the papers that they wouldn't publish them. And the Sun seems to have gone against that and taken everyone else aback by the fact that they are with now, with now they have printed it. So <coughs> it's a kind of unique situation. I think. The Press Gazette did a, uh, a poll yesterday and I think it said 63% of the public disagree with the Sun uh, printer, which I thought was odd because I, I would have thought it would have been the other way. Yeah. And the Sun, the, the Sun of today sort of come out saying the public back us and have selected three readers to say how much the public do back us. Uh, and they've got Louise Mensch, who's weighed in for some bizarre reason. Um, she always so weighs in. I don't think Harry's reputation has been sort of no. seriously no. disturbed no, by this. Sure I think, yeah, he had the play, frankly, had a playboy image before, and I think a lot of people have taken the view as a young guy having fun. And I think that's, for, for, for most people, the argument for not publishing is more along those lines. He hasn't really done anything that bad. But Dan, what are the long-term implications for sort of the debate about press regulation? Do you think it will be uh, of a similar scale when, uh, you know, Princess Diana was snapped in the... In, in, in the gym all those years ago, or is this a different? If, is this of a different scale? No, it feels like the heat's gone out of the story. I think over the la over the last 24 or so hours. But look, uh, clearly the palace, uh, Clarence House is on the warpath. Uh, uh, Pre-publication, the complaints the PCC. The PCC is going to have to adjudicate, and Clarence House is very clear about what it thinks. Uh, uh, should have happened, i.e. that the Sun shouldn't have published. So I think we've got a sort of an interesting a battle ahead where the PCC itself, you know, desperate to show that it's a tough regulator, it can, you know, act, act credibly, has got to sort of negotiate between a, a tabloid and the palace. Uh, uh, and I'm not quite sure I can sort of predict which way the PCC will jump other than to say, you know, they'll be desperate to look good. Good final fling for the PCC, go out in style. Well, I guess so. <laughs> well, they're probably, exactly they're, to think about. they're probably confused and bewildered. They just don't know what to do. Well, what you is Leveson right? thinking of it? Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the one man who, yeah. who I'd love to pick his yeah. brain about what he's thinking of the whole thing. The, um, the, the word is he's, uh, you know, he, he's trying not to think. Uh, in other words, he's not going to get you know, particularly drawn or involved I'm in this sure. one. But it, I wouldn't be surprised if it sort of comes it's, a line in the report. But mm. he can't ignore it. It's such an interesting example of, what it's, of how difficult it is, I think, though, to kind of come up with a solution to how you regulate the press and avoid the internet issue. It's like it, can't, it does kind of sum up the whole problem with it, doesn't it? That you can do what you, what you want on the internet. And had he already seen them on TMZ anyway? We, 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 we may never know, yes. Um, uh, Dan Sabber, Boyd Hilton, Richard Pepiat, thanks very much.